right. Good morning. morning. Welcome to What's New Worship. I'm Pastor Andy Combs, and uh, we're glad that you're here. You are at the church that doesn't care, and what that means is we don't care, and I know that's probably what you're thinking right now with me and my cowboy stuff, but uh, (laughs) we don't care what you look like, where you came from, how much money you make. We don't care what your past is. Uh, We don't even care what you're currently going through. Um, because all that can change because of Jesus. We know that can happen uh, today, and that's what we're praying will happen. And um, so we're excited that you're here. There's a lot of new faces, so if you've been coming, don't you dare speak to somebody else until you speak to a visitor, okay? Let's make sure that the visitors get welcomed and, and uh, made, made to feel welcome and uh, point them in the right direction, get them a donut, get them a coffee, you know, talk to them, pray over them if you need to, find out what's going on in their lives. Um, this is going to be an exciting day. We're glad that you're here, and uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to turn the worship over, and uh, then obviously we have a guest speaker. So let's pray and ask God's blessing, and let's not ask him to show up because he's already here, but let's ask him to show himself off. Man, wouldn't that be awesome? Walk out of here different than when we came in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for what you do for us. You are a good, good Father. Lord, I'm reminded of that every day. I'm grateful for my salvation through Jesus. Lord, we praise you for who you are. Lord, bless this service today. God, we ask your blessing on the worship that's about to take place. God, we ask your anointing over Wes as he leads us into your presence. Lord, I pray that we would walk into your presence with an attitude of gratitude, a a thankfulness of what you've done for us, and just a, a picture of who you are. God, walking into your presence. Lord, then we pray for the fellowship time that we get around and meet folks in, at the, in their need, in their place, Lord, and, and we get to find out and love on people. And then, Lord, when the word's p- spoken, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, uh, bless it, use it to radically, supernaturally change our lives, Lord. We praise you. We love you. We're, we want to be more than fans, God. You are an awesome, awesome God, and we praise you. In your precious name we pray, so be it. You all got to know that he's never going to let me come up here and not do this song said it a hundred times, but um, again, how many of y'all again are excited about Jesus this morning? <laughs> I ask that question because oftentimes we magnify our problems. I have a mother who was a cancer survivor. I have a father who was, a, who was addicted to drugs, and he's no longer addicted to drugs. I have myself who was a violent guy growing up. You couldn't say two words to me, and I was going, I thought I was Ken Harvey, I was going to tackle you. At least I was going to try. But I didn't know if I could until I got finished trying. If you didn't go down, I I was faster than you, so you. (laughs) But I said all that to say that we often magnify our problems, and we rarely talk about that our God is standing there right in the midst of all of that with us. So if we look at our God instead of magnifying our problems, we really see, man, you are right here with us. You, You are strong and mighty. You are awesome, power. I know I'm going through this, but you're walking right through this with me. So when I know you got my back, again, I can't, I'm never alone, so let's go ahead and go into it. And I need y'all to sing with me, amen, because Andy's going to get me. Let's go. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Right there Our God is greater Our God is stronger Lord, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power, our God, our God. Put those hands together, come on. Into the 
Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes. There's no one, none like you, none like you. With one voice, let's say, our God is greater. I got a stronger God. You are higher than any other. I got His healer, awesome in power. I got, I got, I got His greater. Say, I got His greater. I got a stronger God. You are higher than any other. I got His healer. Awesome and power, our God, our God, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Come on, put those hands together in here this morning. What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any. Our God is healed. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God is greater. Stronger. Higher than any other. Our God is He. He's awesome. Our God, our God. Say, hey, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And if our God is, who could ever stop us? And if our God, then who could stand against? Lord, you are high and lifted up in this place today. What could stand against, stand against? Father, we bless your name in this place today. Our God is greater. Come on. Our, Our God, God is stronger. God, you are high. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, one more time, our God is greater, our God is stronger. Let me hear you on awesome. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is great. Stronger. He's higher. Our God is healer. He's awesome. Our God, our God, our God. Now give us a thunderous clap of praise in this place for our strong God, our mighty God, our awesome God, our healing God, our righteous God. Put those hands together. Hallelujah. Jesus just entered the building, and since he's here, we want to welcome him in this place. Make yourself comfortable in us, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, the speaker is coming, but this is where preaching is easy. Let's, let's celebrate God. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Good morning. 
Happy Jersey Day in the NFL and all that. How come we don't do this for hockey? Keith and Barb could wear their sweaters. Woo! Anyway, thanks for coming to What's New Worship. Uh, Facebook, What's New Worship. YouTube, What's New Worship. Instagram, What's New Worship. Is there more of them? Those, those things, we're on all of them. Anyway, we record the sermons. Those will go up later today, hopefully. And then also last week's went up, I think on Tuesday, because it was a holiday and I was lazy. Um, so definitely check that out. It was very cool. Um, and then also Dave's been doing tons of work with all the sound and stuff. So that also makes the YouTube thing sound better. I don't know why, but enjoy that. And you're famous. You're on the TV such. Um, every Sunday morning we have Sunday school. In here is AHA. And we're going to watch a trailer for that in a minute. Yes, you're welcome. Um, and then also Coach has a discipleship class. And then for all the kids over on the other side, we have them separated by age group. So if you guys like to come early, drop your kids off and eat seven donuts while they're not in there. Kids, I didn't do that. Where are my kids? Oh, hey, guys. Love you guys. Um, so Sunday morning is 9 o'clock here at the church. Uh, Bible study tomorrow night is at Artia's house because Andy didn't clean yet because they were on vacation. Oh, it is clean. We're at Andy's house tomorrow. Anyway, Bible study tomorrow night is at Artia's house. I guess it'll start early since the Redskins play at 7. And Andy will just be in the back taking a nap because the Cowboys have already lost. They play tonight, by the way, in case you're wondering. Don't forget. Uh, and then also celebrate recoveries here at the church tomorrow. And they go live tomorrow, right? Officially? I'm waiting on you. I mean, if you're not going to listen to me, why am I up here? Because I'm just here to talk to you, Andy. All these other people just get to enjoy the little conversation me and you have. I wish I could have picked out your wardrobe, but other than that, conversating. So tomorrow night, celebrate recoveries here at the church. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that or pray for them, or if you could please just like to show up, definitely come out. That's tomorrow night, 6.30. Women's fitness is starting tomorrow, Tuesday. Yes! Hopefully you filled out your flyer, otherwise you can't come. Uh, Women's Fitness Tuesday night here at the church. Uh, it's doing aerobics like Christian music videos. If you'd like to uh, grab one of the little uh, pamphlets they have and fill that out, a little questionnaire, and then that is starting up on Tuesday again. Uh, youth group is Wednesday night, 6.30, and then also, hi, coach! Don't do this. That distracts me. You've known me long enough to not wave in the middle. Uh, I'll just look down. Anyway, Wednesday night's youth group is at 6.30, and then also here in the sanctuary we have the family project. Coach is doing, which is a video series. So drop your kids off and then come in here and we have something for you. So that is Wednesday nights. Started last week, right? But you can come. I think you'll be caught up. You'll be just fine. Uh, so that's Wednesday. Thursday nights, we have What's Next Bible Study in Front Royal at the Boggs House. Happy birthday, Emily! Well, the, the sound in the nursery doesn't work, so we'll just pretend that she heard me. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, that is at the Boggs House in Front Royal. If you'd like to go out there, it's What's Next. It's on Facebook. Uh, just track down one of us or... I think you can search, search what's next and have their address and stuff. That's Thursday nights. And then also coming soon, we're going to have, well, not we, uh, we're going to have a women's Bible study here at the church on Wednesday nights. So if you'd like to come out to that, if you live closer to this way. Uh, this coming Friday night is the teen all-nighter. So if you own a bus, you want to drive a bus, or you don't like sleep, Andy could use you. Uh, we're going to meet up here at the church at 6.30, right? Six! All right, so be here 5.30 or 6. If you'd like to help with that. Or if you have any teens, we have tons of buses coming, so definitely uh, come out to that. would be a whole lot of fun. There's a million things they're doing, and you're not ever going to sleep. It's going to be awesome. Are you going to preach on Sunday? When are you going to sleep? No, you're not. Vacation again for Andy, everybody. No wonder you have all-nighters every other weekend. What a world. Uh, and then also next Sunday after church is the men's luncheon. Dave, you making all the food, right? McNuggets. McNuggets for everybody. Dave's cooking. Uh, so that is next Sunday after church. We're going to be here, here in the uh, fellowship hall. If you'd like to hang out for that. Uh, let's see. And then also on October 8th, TJ is putting on that 10th Avenue North concert. It is at some church. Victory Church. Uh, and Dave is doing all the setup and teardown. So he needs anyone over 18 that would like to sweat all day and go to a free concert. I mean, you're in luck. They're going to get some food too. More McNuggets from Dave. So if you'd like to be a roadie for the uh, 10th Avenue North concert, please see or Dave. I think all you have to do is own a black shirt and feel like sweating. So that is on October 8th. It's all day uh, Saturday. Definitely check, it, check out with check with him if you'd like to do that. October 21st is our Feed the Need. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that. I know last year we did spaghetti and then we've done tacos, right? Yes, yeah, so we're going to do food probably. Uh, see my mom. Is, she is here. Hey, mom. Thanks for coming to church. Um, so see her if you'd like to help out with that or if you can donate anything. Uh, and that's on the 21st. And then we're going to do a trunk or treat on October 30th. What is Halloween? Sunday this year? Monday. So that Sunday night, we're going to do trunk or treat here at the church, right? Um, so if you like to decorate your car and dress up and do a lot of fun stuff, and then we'll have stuff in here for the kids. Last year was a whole lot of fun. I think I was a pirate. That was a good one. Um, so we'll do that again. Yes, that's on the 30th. And then I don't know what I wrote. Oh, there's a craft on the September 28th. What are you doing? 
Your enthusiasm is intoxicating. Full reads, everybody! Woo! September 28th at 6.30, the women, the wild women of what's new are doing a wild and crazy crafts, but they're going to give you gloves so you don't cut your fingers because, you know, we'd be, that'd be scary. Um, there are Bibles all around you or on the other side of this wall. If you need one, please grab one. And then also above the Bibles over here is our blessing wall. If you have any blessings, anything absolutely awesome going on in your life, if you can please just write that down and hang it on the wall just so everyone else can see how much God is working, working in this building. Thank you for coming. We have a thing for tithes on the wall and our pillar out here. If you can please just help us grow as a church. Tim, you're coming to pray. Thank you, Dave, for picking someone wearing Redskins clothes to come up on stage. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I like how your shirt has one star. The one star rating for the Cowboys, everybody. <laughs> Woo! We'll clap for the Cowboys, everybody. After you, sir. You got to do something to get rid of him. I don't know what in the world. I know what the bulletin says, but when he gets done, I have not a clue of what he said. I, I wish he would learn sign language or something. I don't know. Good to see everybody this morning. Thank you for coming to be with us. Uh, my wife said something to me this morning about Mr. Harvey being here. She said, I'm sure glad he played for the Redskins, but I'm really glad did he give his life to the Lord and now he's doing what he's doing. I, I appreciate that. It, it reminds me of a story of a little boy asked his daddy, he said, Daddy, how tall is Jesus? And uh, his daddy said, well, son, he's, he was probably around six foot tall. And the little boy said, well, Daddy, I'm four foot two. If he's six foot tall, he ought to stick out somewhere, hadn't he? And, and the thing about it is, is these guys that are athletes and and we see them on TV, and we, lo we love the skins and all that. I'm so thankful that, that as they spend their time, they let the Lord, they let Jesus show. He sticks out on them. You know, when people talk about, I've heard his name mentioned on the radio a lot about the, the work that he does. And I appreciate fellas who don't have to do it, but they do it because they love the Lord. And that's the, and, and if we're going to change the world, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do what we do just because we love the Lord, and that's it. <clears throat> let's pray Father we do love you Lord and we thank you for all that you do for us God you've been so good to us Lord and thank you for that God and thank you for watching over families Lord that are traveling God and bring, us, bring them back to us Lord and we thank you for every soul that's here this morning Lord we pray God for every word that's said and we just pray God that uh, Lord today God that folks will make decisions in their heart for you God so that you'll stick out in their lives, Lord. And we ask all these things, God. And we also pray for the offering, Lord. And God, we pray, God, that you'll bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. So first off, thank you, Andy, for letting me come up here instead of you. So from your Washington Redskins, linebacker, four-time Pro Bowler, and one of, one of Redskins' 70th greatest players, Mr. Ken Harvey, sir. Thank you for having me here. One, sorry, thank you for having me here. Um, I'm, I'm really honored, and, and when I tell you it's an honor to be here, where should I stand at? A, that's, a, that's a Dallas demonic spirit. I'm so sorry. Get the out of here. Get, you go. It's you. Get out of here. Go and change that jersey, and then. God will bring you back whole and new. All right, where am I? Am I? Well, we're good? I can stand here. Okay. All right, so, sorry. Um, well, thank you for having me here. I, uh, I, I didn't get dressed up for you, sorry. It was, I had to do a news program, uh, Ch Fox 5, Ch uh, Channel 5, I do a pregame show, and so I was dressed up for that. I would have been in my jersey, but you know, whatever. I still look good, right? So I'm, I'm all dressed up. 
I, uh, I hope you didn't notice, but I look like, Don I look like Donald Trump dancing at the uh, Baptist church there. Also, uh, I was, I'm like, I got, no, I got no rhythm, no beat. Everybody's like, but you played linebacker. You were, I got, my wife is like horrible. They, they used to, in church, they used to make fun of me, so I would I'd try to clap on beat, and I had to concentrate. I mean, I had to really concentrate. And the lady behind me, a friend, this Art Monk's wife, actually, she would do things like she would go behind me and throw me off beat. And I'm, Ugh! Ugh! But at the end, it doesn't matter, right? God loves you regardless of how well you clap, how well you dance, who you are. It doesn't matter. God loves you. And so uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here, and I really appreciate you guys giving me this opportunity. It's, uh, it's something that uh, it's been a long time coming. But probably uh, it's, it's something I promised God a long time ago. And God said he's going to do some things for me. And God's always been faithful to his word. And sometimes we forget God is like, my word is solid. And it, it will come into being. And I'm just waiting for you. And God's been patient with me. He's been waiting for me. But lo and behold, I'm here. I'm speaking in front of a church. This is actually my uh, second church in three weeks to speak in front of. And I normally don't speak in front of churches that often. It's been a long, long time. And so uh, this is kind of, uh, it's a little nerve wracking, especially when they said I was going to be on YouTube. So let me, let me do it off right. I have a beautiful, lovely wife. <laughs> and we've been married uh, 27 years. And we have, uh, we have, three, we have three boys. Uh, one passed away as, as a baby. And we have two other boys, Anthony Harvey and Marcus Harvey. Uh, both of them are in college, both of them are getting their masters, and I'm bragging a little bit, not because of anything I've done, we, we're just thanking God and how he's allowed our boys to, to go through a lot of things, but to end up in college and to graduate college and, and end up getting their masters. And uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, my youngest son, he played a game last night, so we, we, were in, we, we were in Hampton, Virginia, and we got back here around 1 o'clock this morning, and I had to wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, to get ready to go down to D.C. To, to do the show, then to come from there to here. So I'm a little tired. I'm a little hyped up on uh, coffee and, and apple fritter. Uh, but, you know, if I blank out and pass out, I don't want any ugly guys giving me mouth to mouth. Just, just, so just, just so you know, just so you know. Um, definitely no Dallas guys. You're out the picture. <laughs> So anyhow, so, so it, 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 it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, my youngest son, he was like, after the game, he's like, uh, you know, he texts us. He's like, you're like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm at home doing my homework because I got to get my homework done. And this is after a game. And you can think of a thousand things that a young college student would do or could do. And he's saying, I'm doing my homework. And it's not anything that, that we've done as parents or a little bit that we've done as parents, but anything we've done as parents is because God's kind of allowed that to flow through us, and, and we've just been blessed thus far. And so I say it as a, as, a, as a parent to say that I've seen the other side of where your kids could be, and I see where they're at now, and it's not us. It, it is totally God. Um, thank you again. I'll keep saying it, and, and I may repeat myself. Here's, here's the deal. For me, I try to give a speech when I give my speeches, and I've messed up on so many of them, but I'm gonna try something different, and this way I'm kind of cheating, but you guys can help me out. I'm sure you guys are good Bible reading people, and so there are gonna be parts where, as I talk, I really don't know exactly where it's at in the Bible, and I may just say, I may pause and say, do you know, and if you know, then just somebody tell me where it's at. I know the story, I just don't know exactly where it's at. So this is a pause. This is kind of a test for you guys. This is how well, how well have you reached out to your congregation? How well do they, how, this is a, this is a test for you, man. You don't, God gives you tests in all sorts of ways and you just don't know. Now you're sweating. I see the body language like, well, they're not all my people, they're guests, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. My people know. So here's the first test. Gold and silver, I do not have. But what I have, I freely give to you. Uh, where is that in the Bible? Anybody know? What? All right, Acts. It's in Acts. So, and, that's, and, and it was Paul talking yeah, about 
what we sometimes we don't realize, we don't have to have the, you know, I'm not going to speak and say this is the Greek version or the Hebrew version. I'm not going to have the best tongue. I, I'm not going to have everything that you think a person may have. All I have is what I have, and that's what God has given me. And what I have is I'm giving it freely to you. And I think sometimes we forget and we think we have to have everything in the world in order to reach out and to touch somebody or to bless somebody or to be a vessel for God. And we don't realize that oftentimes it's what we have in us. We don't have to have gold and silver and, 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 and bribe somebody because that may not be what they need. I could be the world's most famous person and have all the glory and all that stuff, but to a starving man who needs a meal, that person who knows how to cook is the blessing. That person who has a loaf of bread is the blessing. And I can have all the fame and all that, and it means nothing because that person that's in need needs the loaf of bread. And so what I have, I'm going to freely give to you because it's the word of God coming through me. And I tell you, it is the word of God coming through me because I do not have a speech prepared. I, I sit there, and this is what I do kind of normally. It's like, God, give me something. God, give me something. God, give me something. Please give me something. I hope it comes out okay. And God has always been faithful, and he's always said, you know what? Here's the word, and use it, for, use it the way I, I let it flow through you, and, and hopefully it touches somebody. Uh, at the beginning, let me tell you the message that I want to talk about is just kind of uh, a story about my life. But the message at the end of the day is use what you have. Uh, God has given you a gift, and we all have gifts. And sometimes we, we belittle the gift that God has given us. Uh, and, and use what you have, and when you work on what you have, and when you learn to, the, the master and you step out on faith with what you have, then God is just waiting to give you he has so much in store for you, or, or not even so much in store for you, that very gift that you have may be just for one person in the world, but he set you up for that one person in the world. And no matter what that gift is, don't ever think it's so small, or I'm so small, or whatever I have is not good enough. God has put it here for you. And he said, you in particular, this gift is just for you. And you are special. You are something. And I put you here for this one reason or for a thousand reasons. Now, I've been blessed. I've had a lot of gifts, or I think I have a lot of gifts. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I think I have a lot of gifts. Uh, but let me kind of go into life, my, 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 my history, and then you can kind of go from there. Uh, I'm writing this book. It's about my life. And it's, uh, you know, one, never thought I would be a writer, because I got a bald head teacher who's like, <laughs> write the sentence again. God, I want you. Can you write structure a sentence? I mean, they're pulling their hair out because they're like, you, your English and your grammar is like, whoa. But I never thought I was going to write a book, but God is like, you know, here's the book. Write it. And I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And so finally I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to be obedient and write this book about my life. I've been writing books, you know, uh, children's books, and I've written a thriller, suspense thriller, and I'm trying to write movies, and I'm doing all that stuff. And, you know, I got I to gotta pay a lot of editors to edit it, but I'm writing all this. But finally, I've been trying to push away, and God's like, write this book about your life. And, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write this book about my life. And I was fearful because I didn't know. I'm like, well, I don't want to write about it and, 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 and call people out. I don't want to put my cell phone blast. I don't want to write all the negative stuff. I don't want to do all that. I just want to, I don't want to write a book about my life because so many people try to write books about their lives and try to expose things and all that stuff. I don't know how to write a book about my life or what to write about my life. And God is like, here, I'm giving it to you. Just put it down on paper. Start somewhere. And a lot of times, even with our gifts, it's like we're afraid to start somewhere. And God is like, you just start. I got you. I got your back. But you have to start. And oftentimes in life, we don't want to start. We don't want to take that step out in faith. We don't want to say, ah, you know what, I'm going to try. I'm going to take a chance. And even if I fail, that's okay because maybe it's preparation for something else and we think failure is failure and we want to give up and we want to quit or we want to point the finger and be condemned by our failure but it's not about failure it's about taking a step out it's about faith it's about learning sometimes the mistakes are something to teach you so that you can get better and that you can grow so I'm writing this book about my life and I had to go back and it's it's, it's oftentimes when you go back and you start thinking about your life where you've been where you come from who are you and this is for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're famous or not famous, if you're a Redskin player, if you're a Cowboy player, you may be t thinking about your drug addiction, uh, 
That was a joke. Ah, just joking. A little jab, y'all didn't catch that one. <laughs> Boop, it's on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm from, I'm from, I, I joke, I'm from Texas, I'm from Austin. I grew up as a, as a, as a cowboy fan. I wanted to be like Tucson Jones and Harvey Martin, and, and I wanted to be that football player. Did I say something wrong? You got up. <laughs> man, I, he had the cowboy jersey on. He's like, I'm getting out of here, man. This is the last time you talk about my cowboys. I wanted to be a cowboy fan. Yeah. And, and obviously, I came and played with the Redskins, and you become a Redskins fan and, and, and really realize and understand the tradition and, and, and the honor here and the respect that people have for the team. And it, it, it is pretty exciting to see the diehard Redskin fans. It's actually kind of scary at times to see the diehard Redskin fans. Amen. I went, one lady was like, uh, she's like, is a friend of mine, she wants to show you her, her, her basement. She has all this Redskin stuff. I was like, all right, we'll go. You know, you go in a group and stuff. And as we're going, she starts unlocking doors. And I'm like, <laughs> You know, I'm looking for a baseball bat and a, and a sledgehammer and her to knock my ankles away because this may be some type of crazy junk. And she's unlocking doors and two or three doors to get to the basement. Now, it was a cool basement. They had all the Redskins stuff. But I'm like, if you got it locked away, there may be something wrong with you. I hope I'm not going to become one of your trophies <laughs> in your, in your Redskins room. So there have been some kind of people who really, really love the Redskins and they've been great fans. There have been people who've... Uh, knitting me like blankets and giving me you know books and trophies and things that it's amazing that people would take the time to do it but they love the Redskins that much and, and, and for that I'm, I'm just grateful and honored to, to be a part of that but on the flip side you also say man if people love the Lord that much it would be amazing because people would just man go crazy and fight and do everything that they can for the Lord so go back and I'm, I'm here and God is saying to write this book about my life. And I started writing about my life. I was a dropout in, uh, in high school. And I dropped out of high school. And so, as most people, sometimes you get a point, point in your life where you feel like, you know, what, am, what is my worth? You know, I'm not worth anything. What am I doing here? What is my purpose? You know, why am I here? And the whole world sometimes seems to point the finger at you and saying, man, you're not worth it. You're not this, this, and that. Or it's not the whole world pointing a finger saying that. That's what you choose to hear. Because when you're going downhill, that's the only thing that makes you say, yeah, you know, I agree, yeah, right, right. And that's all you're hearing. And there may be people around you saying, no, man, brother, hey, you're okay. You're good. You're this and that. But you block it out because the pain is so much easier to deal with. It's your friend. It becomes your constant companion. And so I was, I was a dropout in high school, and I felt like this is the lowest point in my life. And I didn't know where to go. And then I got on my knees one night. And I, I wasn't a super uh, religious guy. I didn't, we went to church. But church was more about, I shouldn't say, it was, it was good. And the messages were good. But I was always kind of like, what if you were like homeless and had the, the raggedy clothes and all that stuff? Shouldn't you be able to go to church with our people staring at you and, and you feeling uncomfortable? Isn't church about loving each other and all that stuff? And, I, I didn't quite, as a young person, I didn't quite feel like that's the way church was. And so as, uh, as, uh, as, as I was on my knees and we did know God and my grandparents were really godly people and we knew it a little bit, but all I knew was to pray. I got on my knees and I'm praying. I'm like, God, God, just help me. Just give me something. Give me a purpose. Give me a reason. Give me a destiny. You know, something. I need something, and, and, and as we're on our knees, sometimes in our darkest moments, we make those, uh, we make those uh, promises to God. God, if you, if, you, if you help me out of this, I will, I, will, I will be up on a stage in a church in West Virginia and praise your name. Lo and behold, I'm right here. I'm here. This is West Virginia. This is, oh, okay, because I, I was looking for the banjos, but yeah. <laughs> I was, I was surprised when you didn't get up and start singing like that. Oh. So you know what I'm talking about. You start dancing like that. I'm, I'm going to get hate. Can y'all edit these, this video? I'm going to get all sorts. It's just a joke. That's the only thing I know. But, but, but I never thought that I would be here. Or I, I, I made the prayer and made the promise that, God, you give me this. I'm going to 
praise your name, do all like this. And God's like, all right, I got you. I got you. You have a destiny in your life. And that's all I heard was like, you have a destiny. You are worth something. God has put you here for a reason. I've put you here for a reason. And sometimes that's all we need to know is that we have worth and we have value. And there's so many people in this world who feel like they don't have value, they don't have worth, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not all this and that. And God was here saying, Ken, I have a purpose for your life, a destiny for your life. So once I heard that, it wasn't like, boom, lightning bolt, all of a sudden, Ken Harvey, football player, NFL, didn't happen that way. This is high school. I had dropped out of high school. So once things like that happen, you have to work. There's something you have to do. Now, it's not, it's not going to be like magical where it's just going to automatically get good. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. I had to go back to school. You know, you go back to school, I'm, I'm in high school, I'm a bigger kid because I had started working out and all that stuff. I go back to high school, I have to finish up high school. It's embarrassing because you're bigger than all the other kids, you're in high school, everybody's looking at you like, well, who is this guy? And you got to finish up. I finish up high school. Now I'm like, well, I'm going to go to college. And everybody's looking at me like, oh, well, how are you going to go to college? You know, who, who are you? What are you going to do going to college? Uh, you're a dropout in high school. And I'm going to college. And everybody, but I can't see it. And sometimes in the natural, we don't see things in the natural, but God has the promise. And God is beyond the natural. God's like, you're going to do it. I got a purpose and a plan for your life. But in the natural, everybody's like, well, you're a dropout. You, you are, you are a, a, a dropout in high school. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to college. And so the only way for me to go to college was to probably get a scholarship or play football. And it's like, I didn't want to necessarily be a professional football player. That wasn't my goal in life. I just wanted to get to school because I wanted to prove to everybody, I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm a smart person. And drop it out in high school was just a moment for me to step back and, and I'm going to make it. And everyone's looking at me like, it ain't nowhere in the world. But you did have some people who were like, come on, you can do it. You got to believe it. If you believe it, you can achieve it, all that type of stuff. And so I ended up, uh, I ended up. And this is how God works. I'm working out in the gym one day, and I meet this guy in the weight room. And by then, I'm pretty strong. I'm, I'm six foot two. I'm about 225 pounds. I'm benching about 425 pounds. Uh, you're supposed to ooh and ah right there. Ooh, ah, ooh. I'm setting you guys up to listen, and you know, so, so I can get my compliments, my ego booster. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm working out, and this guy that meets me in the gym, and he's like, he tells me about this junior college in Oakland, California. Now, I've never been probably more than five miles from my house, but he's telling me about this junior college in Oakland, California, which is you know, way far away at a junior college that no one's ever heard of. And he's saying, you know what, this would be a great opportunity for you to go to this junior college. And I'm like, all right, I'm going. And my parents are like, what, what, what are you doing? But, but by that time, I was like, they were like, you know, you're 6'2", you're 225 pounds. You're eating up a lot of food, taking up a lot of space, <laughs> space. Your feet smell. You need to join the uh, military or you need to get out the house or you need to do something. And it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't like my parents were mean or angry or mad. It was just like, dude, you're a grown man. You're a grown man now. You're 18 years old. You need to do something with your life. And sometimes you got to push the baby birds out the nest. And so I'm like, you know what? For me, I got to get away from where I'm at and move into a different environment. That's oftentimes how God works is that even in our lives, sometimes we have to get away from the things that we think are, are our security blanket and move into something new. And so I had to take, take a chance and go to Oakland, California. Oakland, California, there's this junior college. It's in, in the heart of downtown Oakland. I don't know if you guys know about downtown Oakland, but I'm from Texas, and everybody's like, hey, how you doing? How you doing, son? How you doing? Most of them, some of them are saying other words, but, <laughs> but, but the ones, that, you know, everybody's kind of friendly. Everyone says hello. I go to Oakland, California, and it's kind of hardcore. It's, it's hardcore for me. And it's me and this other guy. We get on a plane. I've never been on a plane before. We get on a plane. I go to Oakland, California, and we end up going there, and we try to, we, we try to play football. I hadn't played, I didn't play my senior year. Really didn't know football that much, but I knew it was an opportunity to at least try to get a scholarship to a major college. And my dream, my thoughts were that I can, get a, I can go to a junior college in Oakland, California. University of Texas will look back and say, wait, and that's one of our guys. 
They'll give me a scholarship and I'll go back to the University of Texas. I'll come back the hero, prove to my parents I wasn't whatever and, and be this hero type of guy. So I go to Oakland, California. I go there, you know, play football for two years. Lo and behold, how God works is that you meet this guy in the gym. He tells you about this uh, college in Oakland, California. You go to Oakland, California. Then all of a sudden, I get these scholarship offers. And one of the scholarship offers to the University of California at Berkeley. And University of California, Berkeley is one of the top uh, schools in the country. And it's one of the top schools for the smart people. And I'm like, whoa, hey, <laughs> I can get there. Because uh, I'm like, well, I can, you know, give it a try. What the heck? I'm going to drop out in high school, and they give me a scholarship. And so I get a scholarship to the University of California at Berkeley. But it shows you how God works, that he can take a dropout in high school and give him something because that's his promise. He's like, I got something for you. You just have to walk the walk. You have to be faithful. You have to listen to me. You have to hear me out and do what I say to do. Now, I wasn't walking around preaching. I wasn't walking around doing this whole thing, but God gives us gifts, and he tells us to use those gifts, whatever that gift is, because he has his way, and all you have to do is just be obedient and using that gift. And my gift was that I could hit. Angry can, hit somebody. What do you do? Get the quarterback, hit somebody. Got a football, hit somebody. That was my gift. Stay out of jail, but hit somebody. That was your gift, right? That was my gift. I could hit somebody. And so, and I found out I can hit quarterbacks. And I was like, all right, I was pretty good at it. So I ended up going to the University of California, Berkeley. I get a scholarship, and I'm there. And lo and behold, this dropout is now at, the, at one of the top universities in the country. And God's like, the gifts are going to keep coming. And they keep coming. And so all of a sudden, that year in the NFL draft, they take line, uh, linebackers taken in the first pick. And so everybody wanted, this, everybody wanted the people to be like LT, this fast kind of uh, linebacker that could also pass rush. And so everybody was running out the linebackers. And at the University of California, Berkeley, the, uh, the guy who was a year before me, was a linebacker also. So I figured if the scouts were looking at him, they had to come and look at me also. And so it all just kind of lined up the way, you know, God just laid it out there. Now, that's not to say there wasn't bad stuff, there wasn't crazy things, there wasn't all this and that, but it lined up. I met my wife there. I mean, great lady, awesome lady, way beyond my pay scale. You know, I had two pair of pants and three shirts, and that was my, that was my wardrobe for the year. Winter, summer, you know, spring, fall, that was my wardrobe for the year. And she still, you know, found a way to love on me and, you know, cook meals for me and help me out. And a lot of times we hear those college stories about the, the good woman who's done that. She was that good woman who did all that for me. And so I ended up going to the uh, University of California, Berkeley. The year that they were taking the draft, they were taking linebackers. And so I ended up getting drafted the 12th pick in the first round. So now I go from being a dropout in high school to being drafted in the, in, the, in the first round. Side note, there were some women who said they don't know that much, or some ladies who talked to me said they don't know that much about football. So let me explain. <laughs> if you're in the first round, it's like a draft, and they, and, they, and they pick people in the first round, and they say these are the guys who we think are the best guys in colleges that are gonna get picked, and each team is gonna have an opportunity to pick those players. I was one of those players that they happened to think I was one of the best players. I did happen to have some good things happen. We went to Japan in college and we played in, uh, in and it was called the Coca-Cola Bowl. I was the most valuable defensive player there. We went to the uh, Senior Bowl, which was a post-game football game, and I was the most valuable defensive player there. We went to the East-West Shrine game, and I was the most valuable defensive player there. I went to the Combine and had a really good Combine uh, the combine is where they test you and you're doing the running and the 40s and vertical jump and all that stuff. And I had a really good combine. So as far as a person coming out of nowhere that nobody knew about, all of a sudden, I ended up becoming known a little bit and people knew about me. And so the Arizona Cardinals drafted me as the 12th pick in the first round. And I ended up playing for the Arizona Cardinals for six years, and then I came to the Washington Redskins and played for five years. For those five years, I ended up uh, making it to the Pro Bowl. And that's just kind of how God blessed that whole story, uh, which is good, you know? But it's not about 
It's not about what God can do for you. It's not about I'm going to do this so I can get that. That's not how God works. It's not he said, you know, I'm going to bless you this, and, 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 and if you give me this, it's, it's because, you know, I'm something special, and he's going to fulfill this thing because I'm something special. It's God has something special for every one of us, and we just have to realize that it's, it's there. We have to realize our own gifts and our own talents and our own blessings. We have to realize that just being obedient to God, he has something for us. And we may go through struggles and we may go through fights, but whatever gift we have, it's for us. It's for us to use for someone else. It's for us to use for ourselves. It's for us to, 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 to give out to the community. And it may only affect one person, but that one person is the person that God has decided to use. And there's a a saying, I, one time I was trying to be romantic and stuff, so there was a poem, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is the Hand That Rules the World. I tried to memorize it, but it was a long time ago and I forgot it, but it's about the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. It talks about moms, and you're the one that rocks the cradle, but you may be the one that, that, that's raising the next president of the United States of America. You know, if you don't like the way things are, your gift it may be the one that you're the one that is going to change the world because of the baby that you raise and the moral character and whatever you put into that child. It goes for dads also. I mean, there's an epidemic of dads not knowing how to be dads. Uh, and it's not, it's, you know, some of it's our fault, some of it's not our fault. Some of it we just don't know, you know. We don't know because it's generational. Our dad didn't teach us. And, you know, if we had a dad, the dad after that didn't teach him, and it goes downhill, and so you don't know. And there's no, there's no, there's no, I guess, book on it other than the Bible that's saying this is how to be a dad. This is what love is about. This is what, this is what it means to raise a son. And so, you know, we all have these talents. We all have these gifts. But sometimes we are afraid to use them. So let me, let me tell you about the gift that I had. I was a, I was a pass rushing linebacker. Once again, uh, a pass rushing linebacker. Can I get a Dallas Cowboy guy to stand up here so I can demonstrate what a pass rushing linebacker does. Uh, we do, it's illegal now, but it's a thing called a head slap. And let me demonstrate the head slap. Where's the Dallas fan at? I don't, I don't want you to, I don't want you. They'd be like, man, he slapped the pastor on TV. Yeah. Get, a, get, get a thousand YouTube clips, right? You know, wow, that was a head slap. But I was, my job was to get to the quarterback, and I'm doing all this because it was like hand moves, and you try to get to the quarterback, and you hit the quarterback. Quarterback is the guy with the ball, and he's standing there, and he, usually he's a good-looking guy, and he's all pretty, and he's like, yeah. And because he's all pretty and I was an ugly linebacker, I'm like, I'm going to knock that smile off your face. And you get to hit him, and then you hit him, and everybody's like, ooh, and ah, and all that type of stuff. I was good at that in college. I was, I was good at that in college. Didn't really learn a whole lot of the other skills necessarily, but I was good at that in college. I get drafted to the Arizona Cardinals, and they're looking at me, and they said, man, you got so much speed. We want to make you a cover guy. We want you to cover the running backs coming out the backfield on third down. I couldn't cover anything. I mean, it was bad. It was embarrassing. It was the back would do a move, and I'm going this way, and he's going that way, and he would catch the ball. And it was just, it was bad. But they thought because of my speed, that was going to be the perfect spot for me. And because I was only uh, 6'2", 225 pounds, they thought I was too light to go up against these big linemen, these 300-pound linemen, these, you know, 285-pound linemen, these, you know, these guys that are huge. They thought I was too light for that. And so then I say this, yeah, let me know on the time where I'm at. Okay, 15 minutes. Um, they thought I was too light for that, and they said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to make you this cover guy. Now, we have gifts but sometimes we have to go out there and shout it out to the world, this is my gift, and I want to use it. This is my gift, and I'm going to use it the best way possible. It could be cooking and fellowship and inviting people to your house. This is my gift, and I'm going to use it. My wife is good with interior decorating and, and good with Christmas designs. And I, unfortunately, at times try, to, try to, to clamp that down, but she had to yell out, this is my gift, and I am good at it. Sometimes in life, no matter what your gift is, and part of it is finding out what that gift is. It could be through, it could be given to you and you just know what it is and you're on your knees praying. It could be through circumstances. 
and it's pushed and you find out what your gift is, it could be through your pastor, it could be through your church, it could be through your neighbor, but you find out what that gift is, and then sometimes you have to shout out to the world, this is my gift, and I am going to use it, and I am going to be good at it. Then you have to work for it. So my gift was pass rushing, so I had to go and tell the coaches, let me pass rush. Let me go up against your linemen. Let me pass rush against your linemen. They were like, okay, well, we'll let you pass up against your linemen. And every day in practice, I made a point to embarrass their biggest offensive lineman every single day. I tried to, I tried to put so many moves on them. You know, I can't dance, but I got a couple of moves. You know, what I, what I got, I mastered. I got a couple of moves, and I would beat them and, 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 and just try to embarrass them so the coaches had no choice to say, wow, maybe you are a pass rusher. And just like your gift, sometimes the world has to say, may say, wow, maybe that is your gift. Wow, maybe that is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because there is no gift too small. There is no gift that God has, can't use. And so I had, to, I, had to, I, had to, I had to fight for that position. But then I ended up having a great career because I was a pass rusher. And because I became good at what I was good at. But here's the second part. You have to practice whatever that gift is. And a lot of times we think that, oh, I just have this gift and so it's going to just come to me automatically. And that's the problem a lot of times in life is that we just think there's no practice involved. There's no hard work involved. I had to practice every day to become good at what I was good at. And if you have a gift or whatever your gift is, you have to practice it. If it's hospitality, if it's love, if it's fellowship, if it's edifying people, as if, if it's lifting people up, you have to practice it. So it becomes so much a part of your life that it is automatic. And for me, I had to practice all my little pass rush moves so that I could do it in my sleep. You know, it was automatic. People would wake me up on a plane. I'm doing this stuff. And they're like, what's wrong with you, man? I'm, you know, they thought I was just <laughs> side story in college. Just side story. I'm digressing. But in college, it, it'll be in my book. So I'm pumping my book, too, so you can read my book when it comes out. In college, I... I I didn't know karate, but I faked like I knew karate. And I had just got drafted. This big guy was this big fight, and I was, I was security for it. This guy's like 6'7. You know, he must have been like 280. He pushed me, and I dropped back in the stance like I knew karate. I didn't know anything. And, he, and, and, and it freaked him out. He's like, hey, man, hey, 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 hey. I, I didn't know, man. I was, just, I, was just, I was just playing around. I messed up his mind. I knew nothing, right? So I eventually, I. I, I started learning karate, so when I started doing all this stuff, I'm trying to pretend like I know something, but really, hand moves for pass rushing. And so, I was doing, you know, you learn this pass rush, but you got to practice it, and if you don't practice it, we all have, you know, we rely sometimes on just our gifting, but it takes practice to perfect it, and that's what God wants in us, is to practice our gifts. If it's hospitality, if it's whatever, practice that gift. Uh, we think it's going to be easy, and just like the offensive lineman that's coming against me, there's going to be opposition to stop you from using your giftings. There's going to be always people saying, oh, you can't do this. There's going to be always people saying, oh, you're not good enough. There's going to be always people saying, oh, you shouldn't do this. There's going to be people laughing at you. There's going to be people pointing fingers at you saying, no, nah, it's crazy. Practice your gifting. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I'm not going to put anybody on the spot, but I think it was in Ezekiel, but he's talking about taking the arrows and, 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 and jabbing them in the ground. And he told this guy, you know, put the, punch, put the arrows in the ground. And the guy did it three times, and he said, you know, why, 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 why did you do it only three times? If you did it more, I would have I made your kingdom last forever. But you only did it three times, and so this is what's going to happen. It's not going to be as great as it could be, and that's kind of like practice, right? The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it, and that can just grow and grow and grow. But if you only do it a couple of times, yeah, you may, you may get a victory here or a victory there, but it's not as great as it's supposed to be because it is about practicing and working on it. It's about this church. You know, this is a church of about 200. Uh, the church I come from, it started off with about 200 people. And it's not always about the size of the church, but the church grew to about 2,000 because they practiced reaching out to their neighbors. They practiced fellowshipping. They practiced saying, you know what, brother? Let me just listen to you. You know what? All I do is I, w I work. I'm a construction worker. That's okay. But I know about hard work. Let me, let me, let me tell you about hard work. Won't you come with me one day? Let's, let's do this. Or use the thing that, the very thing that you have as a gift 
to expand the kingdom. On another note is that once you have that gift, once you're practicing that gift, it means nothing if you don't focus that gift on what it's meant for. If you don't know what that gift was given to you for, if you don't know who gave you the gift, it, meant no, it means nothing. Playing football, if you're just running around randomly, and you, don't, you don't care either way if you go to the Super Bowl or if you win, it means nothing. God has given you that gift, and so you have to focus on it. And you have to say, this is why I'm doing it. I'm here because of this reason, and that is why I'm talking to you. And you don't have to say it out loud, but in the back of your mind, if you know this is why I'm doing it, this is why I'm using my gift, then the focus is on not on yourself, but on the reason why you're doing it. And that's God has given you the reason. God has said, I am the reason. And you have to focus on that. My focus in football was we're focusing on trying to go to the Super Bowl. And so all that practice, all that hard work had a reason, had a meaning. If you just kind of do it just to do it, it means nothing. I've, I've been on the other side where I don't talk to people. I mean, this is finally after, this, I'm you know, 51. <laughs> Was it that bad? It wasn't. He's starting, to, he's starting to ramble, baby. Get out of here. Oh, she wants to be the first one in line. I wanted to get my I thought it was the food. I was like, is that? Is that? Okay, good. She get my signature. <laughs> Focus on where you're trying to go because God's giving you. Now, I, I have this. This is, a, this is a picture. It's a cool picture. And there's a guy who, uh, I'm going to use him because He's not here, so he can't defend himself. But the guy who painted this is a guy named Terry Crews. So Terry Crews is, a, is an artist, uh, or he was an artist. He's an actor now. He does a show called Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He did The Expendables. He was in Old Spice commercial. Uh, he did uh, Are We There Yet? You know, Everybody Hates Chris. Kind of big, muscular guy. Um, you know, and, and we played together. We played football together. But he was a great artist, artist, and here's his gift. He was an artist, and God sometimes takes what you have, and he'll take you into a lot of different directions, but you have to start doing something. So he's an artist, and he's painting pictures for players on the team because he's behind me, he's on second string, and he's just trying to make it on a team. Ends up getting cut, and he's painting these pictures. Finally, him and his wife have to go. You know, he's cut, and he's like, I can't do this, but I want to I wanna produce and make movies, and him and his wife, end up going to, uh, they end up saying, you know what, we got to take a chance and we're going to go to California. Now, to credit to his wife, she, she packed up with him. They, picked, they took their kids with him and moved to California with nothing. Go to California and everybody sees him as this big star now. And we had this conversation last night. I think it was last night or two nights ago. We were talking about it. Everybody sees him as this big star now. But he's in California, and he's working. He's jumping in the back of pickup trucks at 7-Eleven to, to get manual labor. He's doing filing services. He's doing all sorts of stuff, trying to survive, just trying to make it, just trying to, just trying to figure out what it is. But he kept working on his gifting. He kept working on his painting. He kept working on his drawing. He kept improving himself. He kept reading books and educating himself and trying to do well, whatever he could to become really good at his craft and at his trade or whatever his gift was. And so from that, just how God works is that he ends up meeting, um, I think, Arnold Schwarzenegger at, at a, uh, he was doing security, and he met Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Schwarzenegger gave him a small role in a movie, and then he ended up getting a, a TV show where he was kind of like American Gladiator. So I think it was called Battle Dome, and he did this show, and then he got another show and another show. And all of a sudden, all these things started taking off, and his life hasn't been perfect, but it started with him saying, you know what, I'm going to work on my gift. And I'm going to not just assume that it is okay. I'm going to work on it, and I'm going to try to perfect it, and I'm going to try to give it to the glory of God. And right now, we had this conversation. It's like, God put me here, and I'm just, I'm just so thankful for what is God has done for me. And him and his wife, I mean, they, they're, they're a blessing. They've been a blessing to me and my wife. They're good people. They're in Hollywood. He wrote a book about... Uh, about his life and really helped change so many men's lives that it's incredible. And so this, is a, this started off as a, as a friendship, and he did this for me. He's actually, I had to pay for it, but so he wasn't my <laughs> money. 
but it's worth more now because he's Hollywood and stuff. But, but he did it, and it started off with him just trying to make it, but that was his gift. And he didn't settle on just being okay with that gift. He worked for that gift, and he kept working. And as you do that and as you focus on the Lord, the Lord is going to bless you. It may not be in money. It may not be in fame. It may not be in wealth. But the blessings that you get, you will know there's a peace that comes upon you saying, I am doing what I am supposed to do. I am walking in the victory that I'm supposed to walk in. And, I, and it's, 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 it's um, and I'll finish up. It's, for me, it's been my personal journey is you can see what God has done from his dropout in high school to, to make it to the pros. After that time, you know, I went through a struggle. I'm like the Israelites, where I've kind of went through the, the, the desert for 40 years to finally come back to say, God said, you know what? I've never forgotten you. It's not like we're going to bring God into this room. God's already in this room. We oftentimes push him out and close the doors and say, well, you know what? I don't want God in here. And that's how I was living kind of my life in some ways where I was kind of pushing God out. Not always, but at, at times pushing God out. And God's like, I've always loved you. I've always cared about you. I don't care who you are, what you are, what you've done, where you've been. I don't care at all. The only thing I care about is that I love you. And all I want you to do is to walk into everything that I have for you. And so for me to come back on this stage and to be able to speak to you, this is part of something that a long time ago I said, God, man, just, just help me and I'll do this for you. And so... You know, it's kind of cool to see it go full circle that I'm here speaking in front of you guys. And I don't know, you know, people, sometimes you think you're a good speaker and they just, because they like you as a redskin, they're like, oh, that's the greatest speech in the world. And they walk out like, oh, you're an idiot, man. You know, I say, I say stuff that I look back and, you know, you tip. When you're speaking, sometimes those of you who speak, sometimes you'll say something so stupid, you feel like you rise out of your body and you're looking at yourself and you're like, Wow, you're an idiot. You can't get off the stage because everybody's looking at you like, oh, my God, did he just say that? I've done that before many a time. So I'm not the world's greatest speaker. I'm not, you know, the, I wasn't even the world's greatest football player. I look at some of my old plays and a lot of the techniques and, you know, they say, Ken Harvey, man, he, he hustles all over the field. A lot of times I hustle because I messed up on the play. So I'm like, I better, I better tackle that guy because I'm going to get yelled at on the sideline. So everybody thought it was a great play. It was because I messed up on my play. So I'm chilling myself so I don't get yelled at. Uh, all that stuff is that, you know, you look at it and you think you're all great. It's not always that. All that doesn't matter. What matters is that God loves you and he cares about you. And we all have our gifts. And there is no gift that's too small. There is nothing that you have that's too small that God can't take and make into something. And so I... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a testimony. My life has been a testimony, and the more I've written about it, the more I look back and say, wow, that's right, God did this, and God did that, and God, oh, wow, and I didn't, I, and you forget all the times that you've been saved, and you don't remember all the times that God has had his hands on your life and all the things he's done for you, and so uh, here I am, you know, I, I get a chance to talk. I didn't talk anything about the, the Redskins or football. Uh, other than that I played there, and I, and I played there for five years. But life is so much more. You know, I'm, I'm a lot older than that. Uh, life is so much more, and I'm learning so much that as much as we love the Redskins, and as much and as great as football is, as a football player, you know one injury, one career in something, and it's over with. And then you have to move on. And life is a long time from when you retire to when you die. Well, hopefully it's a long time. You know, I've been out of football 18 years, and I appreciate the memories of me playing, but that's 18 years of a lot of other stuff that's happened in my life. And so, uh, you know, here I am and saying, God, I'm here. And I didn't want to come. I really didn't. Pastor Comb kept calling me, <laughs> and texting me, and bugging me, and I'm changing my number, just so you know. <laughs> But I'm here. And, 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 he was, and he was a blessing. And it's like, my wife was like, well, where are you speaking at? I'm like, I'm not really sure. And I was like, I looked, you know, he had sent me the address. And it's like, well, who, who are they? And I'm like, well, we actually never met, right? We haven't met. We've never met. And I'm like, we've actually never met. And he's like, are you sure you want to go speak at this church? Because they may lock the doors, too. And be like, I'm like, you know what? Here I am. God, you put me here. 
And, and, and amazingly, just in the last three weeks, it's been two churches, but it's also been because I've been writing my book. You know, I started do, being obedient to what God gave me, and now he's just opening up doors. And, and so it may not be exactly what I wanted, but I'm stepping out, and it's fearful, you know, having everyone look at you and knowing you may be on YouTube. I mean, when you said that, I was sweating bullets. I'm like, you too, I don't know. I don't need to be famous. I don't want to be famous uh, anymore. I just, I just want to be me, but I also need to be obedient to what God has given me. And, and God has given us, you all, myself, a lot, and he wants us to do something with it. So, one scripture, because a lot of times when you speak, people say, oh, he's funny. Oh, he's good looking. That was another hint. Oh, he's good looking. Oh, he's all this and that. And they forget what the speech was about. The speech is about you have a gift. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story of the talents, and you have something that God has given you. And he's saying, are you going to take that, with that gift that he has, and you're going to hide it away and never use it, or are you going to do something with it and multiply it? Because God has given that to you. What do you have in your own hands? What has God given you? And it doesn't matter. Never think of what you have as something that's insignificant or too small. I'm too young. I'm too whatever. It doesn't matter. God has it for you and for you only. Use it for what it is. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, I will say this before you clap, because I know you're going to give me a great clap. I'm trying to write a song, so I got a song. You're going to sing it here one day. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a song, and I'm writing a book, so once my book comes out, I'll come back, because that's what I do. Anyhow, thank you very much. Awesome. No bad. can't catch a break here today. I will at 4 o'clock, though, I'm just saying. No, you won't. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys are going to think I'm a, a stalker. You, I'm <laughs> I call him and... There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness well I'm resigning today no uh, just thankful um, I've been asked a lot obviously this week uh, if I was trading teams or anything like that or if I was a closet Redskin fan and that kind of stuff and uh, <laughs> no my, my response is uh, has been this every time I'm for Jesus. I'm for, I'm for any opportunity we get to uh, share Jesus, and that's why I reached out to uh, Ken, and, and um, I believe that uh, God purposely put him here. I believe that somebody in here today needed to hear that they are, are worth something, that God didn't mess up, that he prepared them fearfully and wonderfully created them to do some great and mighty things, and that's what you are called to do. The, the, the act of walking in obedience now has to take place. And uh, you will achieve and have the peace that passes all understanding. And the victory that we get is above and beyond any Redskin Dallas game or anything like that. There is uh, there's something awesome about being a child of the one true king. Amen? Amen. That's the time to clap right there, right? So we can get Ken back. There'll be a love offering out here as well. He's going to sit out here and sign some autographs. If you want him to sign your uh, bulletin or anything like that, he'll do that. There's some Sharpies out there. Uh, he didn't know he was doing that. I'm telling him that right now. No, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, but uh, there'll be a, a basket there on the way out the door. He is coming literally for a love offering. Matter of fact, he didn't even ask me for that. Um, but, it, you know, he's been driving around here like crazy. As a church that loves God and loves people, let's make sure uh, that we do that. And I'm very thankful. I appreciate your brother. And uh, just thankful that uh, you're sharing Jesus with people. And that's, that's your gift. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Yeah, let's pray. And uh, I know Hail to the Redskins is going to come on when I walk out of here. <laughs> oh, well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just uh, praise you for who you are. God, thank you for not ever giving up on us. God, thank you for being that voice of truth because so many would tell us that we can't or we won't or uh, it's never going to happen or that we're nothing and that you look at us and that you see fearfully and wonderfully made, created in your image, able to do, do above and beyond anything that we can think or imagine. God, we praise you for that. God, I know this morning that there's somebody here that might not know you, might be in a world that's full of chaos right now, Lord, and they need to know who you are. And God, you gave us Jesus to do that. So God, I pray for anyone that doesn't know you. I pray that they would look to Jesus. Your word says, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, God. So I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, I pray that they would start with telling you who they are and how they messed up and then ask you for help. Lord, and I pray for those that are going through some battles and challenges and maybe have, have some doubt or discouragement going on in their life. Lord, I pray that you reminded them. I pray that they would hear the words that were spoken today, the truth that was spoken today, that they were called to do great and mighty things, that they were fearfully and wonderfully made, that God is on their side. And if you are forced, then what can stand against us, God? So we praise you. We thank you for this awesome day. We love you. You're an awesome God, and we praise you. In your precious name we pray. So be it. You're dismissed. Go ahead and hit that mess.